This is a very important moment uh, in the history of our country and what we will do now when the resources are available to us to promote the best educational policies to, and to make the best access available to families and to, and to young people seeking an education and to finance that, uh, that education. Uh, the decision we will make uh, will we'll, we'll speak to the character of our nation. It will speak whether or not we understand uh, we understand uh, what the decisions we have to make to build a world-class education system and to have highly skilled and trained workers and individuals in our, uh, in our country. Uh, the, 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 what we are considering is, is, is the House reconciliation uh, led, uh, instructions from our budget committee that instructed our committee to save money uh, and to deal with the student loan issue and on, on health care. Those, those, those two instructions are joined. There can only be one reconciliation package that goes to the, uh, to the Senate. They will be joined in the House and sent to the, uh, uh, sent to the, uh, to the Senate. Uh, and we, what we did is we took uh, the uh, suggestion of the o Obama administration that we take the $87 billion at that time in subsidies uh, to the lenders and we move that over and recycle that for the benefit of families and students trying to finance an education uh, for, their, uh, for their future and to help other, uh, help other education uh, programs. This wasteful spending was first identified by President Bill Clinton when he tried to start the, the direct loan program, successfully passed with Senator Kennedy's authorship and Paul Simon and some others, Tom Harkin and myself, and, and a, a small program was run. In every budget, I think every budget that President Bush submitted to the Congress, they identified this as wasteful spending. President Obama had the courage to say, let's take that, those, that wasteful subsidies and, and put them into uh, the benefit of families. And that's where we are today. The question is really whether or not the Senate will accept that reconciliation package as negotiated. It has yet to be negotiated. Has to be has to be deficit. Uh, new, in fact, it has to save money, not just deficit uh, deficit neutral. It's very very important that we do this. This is about where middle income and lower income families live. Will they be able to finance, and will they have access to educational opportunities? We now know because of the economy that more and more people are subscribing to the Pell Grant. They never thought they would be eligible for a Pell Grant, but they've lost their jobs, or their children are eligible because the family has lost its income, or, some, or students who were working are now eligible. So whether or not they will be able to continue their education. We know that Americans are, are from all economic classes, all ages, are seeking out classroom space in community colleges to try to get training or retraining so that they can hold on to their job or get a new job or, or, or go with the future of the economy. Colleges are running extra days, extra hours. All over this nation, we're trying to help those community colleges. We know that the Pell Grant doesn't keep pace with the increased cost because the states haven't supported their, their universities. So we're, we're, we're protecting them against that inflation so they'll be able to continue to afford that, uh, that college. We know that a young, a young child that gets exposure to a good early childhood education program makes, it does better when they're in the fourth grade. And if they do well in the fourth grade, they're less likely to drop out in the 10th grade. For the first time, this nation is saying they want to make an investment not just in slots in child care or early child education places, but the quality of those programs. So here we have a complete package. Also, in this economy, this package keeps the interest rates on student loans from doubling. Very important when families are trying to figure out whether they can pay it or whether or not they can, uh, uh, they can afford to pay it back if they take it out in the forms of loan. We also, we also uh, uh, lower the, the forgiveness for, for loans so that people can enter careers where they can start at maybe lower wages but build a career and know that they'll be able to pay back their loans that they won't, you know, they won't be making the choice between whether they can rent or ha have a place to live and pay back their loans. This is a critical bill to this economy at this time. We now know there's a whole new round of cuts coming at the state level, at the educational level. And the question is whether or not we can take these subsidies and use them for the greater good, use them for the public interest, use them for middle income and lower income families who are striving 
to provide economic, uh, educational opportunity and economic opportunity for themselves or their children. This is about the character of this nation. And uh, uh, for some to suggest that it's too complicated, it's too this or it's too that. We deal with complicated legislation all of the time. And in this case, we can do health care and we can do education. And it's critical that we do both. It's critical that we do both because the health care bill will provide many students coverage that they don't have and they can still go to school with the passage of that bill. Health care will make it affordable for the older workers. They'll know that they'll be able to stay in school and pay their premiums. These bills are related to the future of middle America in this country. And I hope that we can pass it. And I want to thank my, my colleagues.